You want to know the general situation in Russia? In the early 90s, our ancient state fell down. Uh, and then lots of problems, lots of problems everywhere. It just became capitalized. And uh, the country just split into two parts, completely rich and completely poor people. The borders were open and the hurricane of immigrants began. It's bad when uh, lots of people from another country, uh, from poor countries, come to my country and try to work here. They see us as the people who, call, who, who completely destroy their lives. Never support immigrants. Just try to show that you don't like them. And that makes the atmosphere of hate. And they see that they cannot be here, and their children cannot be here. When the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, Russia opened its borders, and people from the Caucasus and Central Asian regions began migrating to Russia in search of a better life. Every year, hundreds of thousands of migrants enter Russia in search of jobs in the country's growing economy. Meanwhile, Russia's native population has gone into steep decline. The ethnic balance of Russia is shifting, and there's been a backlash. The contractor says, oh, I can hire this motherfucker and pay him just one dollar uh, per day. Why should I hire a Russian who asks for ten dollars per day? We are active young men who just try to, to see, not to close their eyes, to open their eyes. Every single moment, every single moment, write about it. Think about it. Don't see it like, like, like a laser red and hold doing nothing. Just take your fist and make your life. Attacks on immigrants have become an almost daily occurrence in Russia. Often it's the work of skinheads, inspired by the teachings of Adolf Hitler. Ironic, considering the Soviet Union lost more lives defeating the Nazis than any other country during World War II. I arrived in Moscow on April 19th, the day before Hitler's birthday, when every year there's a spike in violence around the country. Being a black man in Moscow is... is it's dangerous. <laughs> I'm always worried, I always watch my back. If I'm going to class, I just go straight to class. I don't like walk around to places I do not know. Foreign students at some of Moscow's universities are under lockdown during the days surrounding Hitler's birthday. They aren't allowed to leave their dorms for any reason, out of fear for their safety. We want to go out, we want to enjoy life. I mean, we want to go to class, we want to study with our friends, we want to be with our friends. It's like you're in a prison of some kind, you know? It's like in one huge prison. Akili came to Moscow from Tanzania to study medicine. His roommate, Jonathan, is Sri Lankan-American and moved from Miami to study to be a plastic surgeon. In Russia, it's completely different from you know, what, what we had in the United States. They don't distinguish between colored people, whether you are tan, black, whatever, you're white or you're black. You can, you can, there's nothing in between. While trapped in their dorm room, Akili and Jonathan could still see the growing presence of Russian neo-Nazis on the internet. Skinheads have started taping their racist attacks and posting them online. The first time I watched it, I was devastated, completely devastated. I didn't know what to do. I mean, I didn't know, you don't notice all this until somebody actually puts it on your face. Hey, this is what's happening in your country, in the country that you're living in. The attacks don't appear to be random, but rather organized and carefully orchestrated. The skinheads, they take young kids completely lost, take them into their hands and say, hey, look at you right now. You have no job, no school, no nothing. You know who's the cause of that? colored people, foreigners. And, it's like and they just brainwashed them their whole life. Why? Because you always need a scapegoat to explain to yourself why you are in such a bad situation. Getting in with the neo-Nazi groups is difficult, but my translator offered to introduce me to some people who might be able to give me some insight into who was behind these videos. 
these videos that we're watching on the internet of skinheads beating up immigrants. What is your opinion on them? Ну эти ролики они в первую очередь пропагандистские ролики. То есть мы показываем, что у нас в России иммигрантам приезжать опасно. У нас есть коренное население, которое даст отпор этим иммигрантам. Даже сложился миф очень сильно вот в странах Кавказа, Средней Азии, что в России убивают, убивают за то, что мы не русские. Вот и это ограничивает существенно приезд иноверцев в Россию. И поэтому в такие ролики продолжают выпускаться, потому что от них есть результат. I was surprised by how easily these videos were circulating around Russia. Last year, Amnesty International declared violent racism in Russia out of control and heavily criticized authorities for not doing enough to stop it. These skinheads actually have supporters in the government. Yevgeny here is an aide to a member of the Duma, the Russian parliament, and he offered to introduce me. The following day, Yevgeny met us outside of the Duma to escort us in to meet his boss, Nikolai Koryanovich, an outspoken ultra-right-wing politician. His ideology is evident by how he decorates his office. One of the first things we noticed was a picture above his desk, of his own head pasted over Stalin's body. We've seen a lot of these videos on the internet um, of people attacking people of color walking around the streets. Can you comment on this? Russian people don't want to live with rabbi on their land, which is happening now. So if the government doesn't do the problem of organizing the migration process, then people start to show the initiative, which can be used in different forms of violence. But do you actually advocate this kind of violence? Они оправданы, прежде всего, как я и говорил, бездействием власти. Поэтому, если власти, я об этом говорил, в Сенат Государственной Думы не будет дальше системно подходить к тому, что у нас происходит в России, то наше общество находится на пороге гражданской войны. Koryanovich has proposed a number of anti-immigrant measures, including one in which Russian women who marry foreigners would have their citizenships revoked. And while measures like this may sound extreme, Many Russians agree with the underlying sentiment. The internet is packed with different organizations spreading their ideas and recruiting a following. One group with a particularly strong internet presence is the National Socialist Organization, or NSO. I learned they were holding a rally in honor of Hitler's birthday. The rally was held in the center of Moscow and surrounded by heavy security. A crowd gathered to show support for the National Socialist ideology defending Russia from what they believe is a takeover by minority groups such as Jews, Muslims, and immigrants from the Caucasus. I'm a national socialist and I prepare uh, to fight for my people. We're hoping that future belongs to us. Uh, we hope that uh, the power will be our. The star of the show was Dmitry Romyantsev, the unofficial leader of the NSO. His recruits stood in the crowd in formation, hanging on his every word. I knew Dmitry ran a gym where he trained young men how to fight. I wanted to find out if he was connected to the internet attack videos. So we just finished the rally, and uh, Dimitri and all of his guys are really cautious about talking to us because right around Hitler's birthday, they say they're being followed by the police everywhere. They have agreed to meet with us, and we just have to be very low key. Dimitri got in our van to find a place he felt secure enough to give an interview. After driving around for 45 minutes without any luck, I reluctantly brought him back to our hotel room and quickly set up two cameras. So, Dimitri, can you tell me a little bit about your organization? Пока мы готовим людей для того, чтобы участвовать первое в осуществлении получения власти или захвата власти, пользуясь моментом, второе для того, чтобы люди получив власть, как говорят, мало взять власть, важно ее удержать, удержать власть и использовать ее для целей Right now, what are they using some of their training for? Um, a lot of these uh, 
videos we've seen on the internet show people um, attacking immigrants in the street. Are these people that have taken your training? No. <coughs> полностью откровенно на этот вопрос я ответить не могу, скажем так. Люди, которые участвовали в таких мероприятиях, есть и среди членов ансо. Are they acts that you encourage? Вы имеете в виду морально или материально поддерживаем? Uh, do you mean uh, morally or like financially, physically? Both. Морально поддерживаем. Мы это одобряем полностью, да. Что касается какие-то материальные поддержки физические, то, пожалуй, на этот вопрос отвечать не буду. I wanted Dmitri to show me where his training took place, but he insisted that because of Hitler's birthday, he was being watched closely and didn't want to go to any of his regular hangouts. After our meeting, he went MIA. He turned off his cell phone, and my communication with the NSO came to a halt. A week later, 24 hours before I was set to leave Moscow, he called and told me to meet him in the lobby of my hotel. He said to rent a van, but wouldn't say where we were going. As we drove outside of Moscow, he constantly looked over his shoulder to make sure we weren't being followed by police. After a few hours of driving, we arrived and hiked about a mile into the woods. I had no idea where we were, but the location looked similar to ones I'd seen on the internet, where skinheads train in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Recruits had gathered from all around the country for a weekend of training and the annual initiation into the NSO. Устраиваем полосу препятствий. Ну, конечно, часть подготовки. Дело в том, что мы считаем в данный момент в этой стране при этой политической системе уважающий себя русский человек должен быть постоянно готовым. Цель нашей тренировки во всем. Мы должны уметь драться и в случае, скажем так, обострения ситуации и в повседневной жизни. It wasn't exactly clear to me what some of these exercises were supposed to be for, but these young recruits took the training very seriously. Идет этническая экспансия на нашу землю, идет замещение, как я уже сказал, замещение нашего народа на прежних чужаков. Поэтому любые формы сопротивления этому их можно только поприветствовать. Террора, насилие, взрывов, убийств, все оправдано во имя собственной нации. What do you personally do to preserve the society that you want? Вполне логично вам рассказать, то участвую в работе этой организации, которую вы, собственно, сегодня посетили. А больше, я надеюсь, вы понимаете, я ничего вам сказать не могу. Почему? Сами не догадываетесь? But then I was introduced to Tsak, a skinhead whose nickname means hatchet in Russian. Tsak wasn't shy about his participation in street fights. What is the purpose of uh, going out and causing these street fights? 
цель. Значит, люди должны понимать, я имею в виду скинхедов, что им придется драться, им придется убивать, может быть, придется умереть кому-то, может быть, многим даже придется умереть, что они должны быть просто к этому готовы, потому что начнутся беспорядки скоро массовые, уличные, и мы должны быть готовы к ним. Tsak gave me a DVD to play on my laptop. He boasted that he'd created many of the videos I'd watched back in the dorm room, and he had plenty more to show. So who is this that they're beating now? Whatever happened to this guy? Did he survive? You seem to get a lot of pleasure watching these. Huh? You seem to like watching these, you get a lot of pleasure. Yes. Самое приятное то, что это как бы закрутил процесс то я вот этой вот своей съемки на видео. Это именно то, чем я вообще занимаюсь, это сейчас моя профессия. Пропаганда. Человек посмотрел, думает, да, слушай, а красиво, я тоже так хочу, и пошел кого-нибудь зарезал. Tsak's propaganda has a growing audience. It's estimated that over half of the world's neo-Nazis now live in Russia, between 50 and 70,000. <laughs> when the training was finished, Dmitry escorted me out of the woods, and I left Russia the next day. A few weeks later, Tsak was arrested and imprisoned on charges of instigating ethnic hatred and threatening violence. But in August, a video was released on one of Russia's most popular file-sharing sites, demanding Tsak's release from prison. It featured two dark-skinned young men in an unknown location in the woods, bound and on their knees. The men are gruesomely executed, one decapitated with a knife, the other shot in the head. A note accompanying the video also demanded the expulsion of all Asians and people from the Caucasus from Russia, and it called for the establishment of a new national socialist government to be led by Dmitry. The video quickly became one of the most widely circulated internet videos in Russia. It's still not known who created it. This was one of the most difficult pods I've ever worked on. Not just because we were tracking down neo-Nazi skinheads and trying to gain their trust so they'd talk to us on camera, but as a reporter, it's a challenge to cover what these guys are thinking, what they're saying, and what they're doing without becoming an unwitting carrier of their message. The alarming fact is racism in Russia is on the rise, and violent attacks against immigrants are happening more frequently every year. Organizations like Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and the Sova Center in Moscow have all raised flags to draw attention to this issue, and now Current is doing the same. If you've got a comment about this pod or you'd like to give us your thoughts, please feel free to send us an email to feedback at current.tv.